Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord's name be praised. Praise the Lord. This is Super Champions Hour of the Jesus Kaput Ministry, JCL for short, originally called Jesus Glory Ministries. And we are streaming unto you from the Holy Ghost Cathedral. We happen to be our international headquarters. We last started with a series on obedience is a plus plus. We took our main scripture from First Samuel and I advise you to read the whole of the verses over there, but more especially verse 22 and 23, which says that obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of ram. And if obedience is a plus plus, if you are then you should know that disobedience is a minus minus. It's like a virus. It's like a bacteria. It's like a cancer. It eats into your life, your natural life here on earth. And it's also into your spiritual life for all eternity. So you must be wary of it. You must be careful not to walk a life of disobedience. And as we go on, the Bible says that is God interested as a prophet Samuel got it from God to tell King Saul in your sacrifices you don't do God thing in Satan's way it's God who said heal the sick raise the dead preach the gospel to the poor he said a good religion is to visit the widows and also to be a father to the orphans it's good building orphanages and showing mercy of kindness to people but the point is you can't be doing this thing without obeying what god tells you obedience is if god says do something you do if said don't you don't do you understand you are not sovereign you are not god he is the master he is sovereign he is adonai master and ruler controlling our life he made the universe both visible and invisible. And he made you. You obey him. You are not your own king and your own lord. And disobedience, he says, is like witchcraft. Rebellion. You are like an idol worshipper. And that's what God hates. When he was making the world, nobody was there to help him or give him advice. That's why the first commandment of the ten he gave to Moses said, Thou shalt not make any other God like me, no, make any image like him. No one, the Bible tells us in the New Testament, that there is only one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus, who gave his life as a ransom for many. That's why he say he's a jealous God. You can take everything away from God, but not the fact of his divinity, his, his creatorship, that he is God. He will not share that glory with anyone. He has expressly said so. And as we continue with that series, we have as our subtopic for today. Why obedience is almost an impossibility. Did you hear what I said? Obedience is almost an impossibility in the realms of men here on earth. Why is it so? Firstly, we will see that the originator of disobedience is Satan. And we read that from Isaiah 14, 12 to 15, and in other places. But he said, How have you fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn? You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nation. You said in your heart, I was sent to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I was sent above the tops of the clouds. Will make myself like the most high, but you are brought down to the realm of the dead, the death of the pit. Satan, that ancient serpent. He was called Lucifer, son of the money. But after his rebellion, his pride and arrogance, to make a coup, to overthrow God, to ascend above him, so that he will take the position of God, of being worshipped, for him also Satan to be worshipped. That was his downfall. 
He has turned into an ugly creature. Do you understand? He's a rebel. His end is the lake of fire and brimstone, the Bible says. He said, hell was made for the devil and his angel. It was not made for human beings. Don't follow him. Number two, the reason why is an almost an impossibility for us human beings to obey God is Adam's fall in the Garden of Eden. You read the whole of Genesis chapter 3, where the serpent Satan appeared and deceived Eve. And Adam, as the husband of Eve, also willfully joined the wife to eat the forbidden fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. I've always been saying, according to scripture, every man worship his wife's gods, which are idols. Go and ask King Solomon. He had 300 wives to boot 700 concubines. What did they make him do? So he had to make altar for each one, thousand idols. He who was loved by God because of women. Do you understand it? If, if you have one woman, you meet her needs. If there are three, you are in trouble. There are five, you are in trouble. Even two, you are in trouble. Did you see? That's what it is. You worship your wife's idols. Their desire. It may not be human image. Your wife will make you steal. Your wife becomes annoyed with you. Or she starts crying, having pity party. You do whatever you want to make her happy. Otherwise, she also will not make you happy. You say, the young man, young man, young man, listen, listen. <laughs> Don't follow after many gods. Read the Bible of Proverbs. And you see, did you hear me? Even one will give you trouble. And you want to. <laughs> Go and ask something with all the women follow. And go and ask King David himself. Go and ask many other people. Go and ask King Ahab. Go and ask many more. And go and ask others. You say you are not married. What about the girlfriends you have? That is it. They will make you do what you don't have to do to please them. Otherwise, they will work with you again. Do you understand it? Women have powerful influence. You will know only know that what the woman is telling you is not right. But what is it? Otherwise, she also will not give herself to you. You know that. You know that. When it comes to that, even the mighty men are falling. They become like small boys, as if they are toy and they are, they are cookies and everything have been taken away from them. Mm. Romans 5, 19, also tells it. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Because of Adam's sin, all of us, as seed of Adam, we became disobedient unto God. Number three, making all mankind thereafter disobedient. You see, that is... Satan's same nature of disobedience and rebellion was transmitted into the human nature by birth, by birth. You come out of your mother's womb as a sinner. You don't come into this world to sin to become a sinner because you have been born a sinner. That's why you sin. A tree bears its like fruit. It's not the fruit that makes the tree. It's the tree that makes its fruit. If it's an apple tree, it will bow means bear fruit of apples. Do you understand? If it's banana tree, it will bear banana. Whatever it is. So, if you're a sinner, you will sin. You are conceived like that. So, Romans 3, 22, 23 say, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There's no difference between you and gender. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Fourthly, all humans now have a propensity to disobey than to obey. Do you understand propensity? There's a drive in us. Why do they say bad news sell? <laughs> because it's a fallen world, Adam and Eve. So everything is falling. All human beings have become vultures. We eat carcass, dead bodies, rough things, things which are stinking and filthy. Just check the social media. 
So some people know that they're high-tech companies that regulate some of the application. They pay to people when their output that they put on board become viral. So many are concocting things, fabricating things which are not right. They are not true. So they get thousands of viewers so that they are paid by the high-tech company. And what is it? The things are filthy. The things are wrong. The things are sexually immoral. The things are lies. Then people gobble them. When true stories, which are noble comes in, people don't listen. They pass it over. Just like you are preaching the gospel. It attracts a lie. Tell lies, exposing of a human body. Uh, or they say, somebody said that I have slept with 20,000 men. Oh, everybody will watch it. Perfect sex, everybody will watch it. This thing has happened. So, young people, especially, have been concocting and fabricating filthy things. And people have been swallowing it, hook, line, and sinker. Then they be forwarding it, forwarding it, forwarding it, because we are vultures. <laughs> Lies. Things which are filthy, these are filth. Pornography, filth. You see, that's how all humans have a propensity to disobey than to obey. When things are good, like Philippians 4, it says, that watch these things, things which are noble, things which are true, things which are honest, Things which are good report, etc. He said, think on this thing. No, no. When things are true, people will not, even if they look at it, they won't even press any button for them to watch. But things which are filthy, bad news, we say, good news, that they say, because all have sinned. And our propensity, our heart disposition is to feed on garbage, refuge. And that destroy our lives. So young men, young men who are listening to me, don't be involved in disobedience. It doesn't help. It will destroy your life, destroy your future. It will destroy your prosperity to you, to destroy. So don't take that to, you see, I'll go for money, I'll do it and I'll have, it will be viral. Do you understand it? You are killing yourself. What is money? Because you love money so much that you put poison. These are poisonous. It's worse than cocaine. It's worse than hard drugs. It's worse than fentanyl. Do you understand it? It's poisonous. Why should you have viral video and you are telling lies? Or even it wasn't lie, but you recorded um, a bad event when you said it that people are watching. Is the people who are watching we, who I have also a problem with. What do you feed on? There are certain things which are sent to me as rejected outright. Do you understand? Violence and the perversion in sex and the likes. And lies. So it's made many people liars. Young men and young women. Liars. Let's do the Lord in prayer. Say, Dear Lord. Dear Lord. I repent. I repent of living a low life of living a low life of disobedience of disobedience following the crowd following the crowd for I myself for I myself have a propensity have a propensity to cobble down to cobble down felt for I'm a sinner for I'm a sinner forgive my sins forgive me my sins wash me wash me with the blood of Jesus with the blood of Jesus Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my and Lord. And personal Savior. And personal Savior. And make them possibility. And make them possibility. In my life. In my life. Of not obeying. Of not obeying. The word of God. The word of God. Change. Change. So that I can. So that I can. can obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. For, for things which I bless him. For things which I bless To run through my life. To run through my life. And my children. And my, and my children, children, children. For all humanity. For all humanity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I call it down. I call it down. Amen. Amen. Let me pray. I pray. I can see people who are struggling. People who are in bondage. I can see demonic oppression upon people. I rebuke those demons to break loose their hold over your life right now. I rebuke the spirit of sin and rebellion over your life. I rebuke right now those demonic activities. You think it is by your own disposition that you are doing what you are doing. 
behind these activities. Do yourself. Your disposition is all right. But I command Satan to break loose it all over your life in Jesus. You are no more going to walk with the wrong, the wrong crowd in the name of Jesus. Come back home. I say, come back home. I put a difference between you and those bad friends. You are no more going to work with them. I put a difference between you and that spirit of alcoholism in the name of Jesus. Uh, and those hard drugs in Jesus' name. And those sexual perversion and running with the crowd in Jesus' name. Sexual promiscuity in the name of Jesus. I break its hold over your life. I command those demons to go and never come back to you. And I pray that you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost and be filled with the fruit of the Spirit of God. I command the angels of God to keep charge over you, that you not touch your feet against any stone. And I pray that the Lord will give you an insatiable hunger and test after Him and test after obedience to His word for now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I call it and say Amen. Amen. And I put your hand wherever you are hurting. And I pray that every sickness and disease that Satan has afflicted you, those chains will be broken. Those spirit of infirmity shall leave you and you will be healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in Jesus' name. Internal organs as well as external organs in the day of Jesus. And I pray for your marriage. I pray for your finances. I pray for your business. Whatever profession in Jesus. There will be a turnaround in the name of Jesus. We call it and say a big Amen. 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 And I introduce you to spiritual growth, godliness with contentment, for spiritual exercise you should do daily. We call it money devotion or quiet time. You must find time, first place with God. And if you have interaction with God consciously throughout your life, everything will be in order. And as you call on the Lord, the Bible says you will never be put to shame. The first one is the Bible reading of the word. You have to feed on it day by day, even if it's a small point portion it should be consistent every day you must not be without the word of god and ask the holy spirit to give you illumination when you are reading the word in the name of jesus and also when it's being preached listen attentively and pray to god that you will not be deceived but he will give you illumination explanation for you for to obey is better than sacrifice and to hacking down the fat of rounds. Number two is prayer prayer is you talking back to god listen to god and god God will direct you and instruct you in every way and thank him for his needs and thank you also for being whom he is and worshiping and also bring your supplication and petition unto him in the name of Jesus. He will answer you and do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or even mind. God knows he cares. He has already made every provision in Christ for you. Number three, you attend the Bible believing church. That's of the same father flock together. Hebrew 10, 24, 25 said. If we attend church, we provoke each other unto love and good works. Tell the pastor, you are the preacher. On the airways, you have given your life to Christ. He knows what to do. He will disciple you in new covenant class that you will build up. But desire the sincere make of the word and prayer and fellowship together with the brethren. Don't go with the wrong crowd. Turn away from them. When you see them, witness to them, but don't follow them. And number four, tell others about the saving power of the Lord Jesus. Give your testimony for a beginning. And as you grow in the Lord and the scriptures, you will use the scriptures as well to witness to them. You are an ambassador of Christ. We will go ahead. We are not done with yet in obedience, being a plus plus. In disobedience, being a minus minus. Now, by the end of this series, your life will be transformed tremendously and you will never be the same as you started with that. And you walk in the victory of Christ and you 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 have everything that needed to be had over here on earth and more so for all eternity. Until then, I say, I wish you the shalom of God, the peace of God and the joy of the Holy Ghost. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide. Jesus, thank you. Thank you.